Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you my latest set of reviews and updates of things I've been watching with an Android. Not necessarily a quick tip or app review, but a way to customize your device. So to start it off, um, I, I have this week's cover image source in the notes. It's a super long one, but I wanted to try a prompt that actually included every single show in this week's review to see how that would come up. So that's how we get to this week's AI generated cover image with everything that I've been watching. So hopefully you find it kind of interesting, amusing, and very well done. But regardless, um, as far as this week's um, reviews go, I actually haven't had a chance to watch Shogun as of this recording just because I just felt like watching another trilogy of films. So I I'm skipping Shogun for around this weekend, so I'll get caught up with any updates and reviews for next week. But I did have a chance to watch Star Wars The Bad Batch, so episode 12 of season 3, Juggernaut. So we have um, Omega being taken to the um, um, to Tantis and learning a little bit more about what's going on there. A little bit of what she's up to, but learning about that room where all the other kids are in, a little bit more about M count. Uh, we have the Bad Batch teaming up with uh, Fee again and uh, working on attacking this one base, which, and I totally forgot to check that and I thought about it when I was watching the episode, but that base reminded me a lot of that base that the Mandalorian um, and the rest of the guys break into in, I think it was season two, but don't quote me on that, but that one base that the Mandalorian breaks into. So that layout and formatting look very, very similar. So I actually want to see if that is the same base or not. Granted, it's the Empire and they probably have very, a few bases that look, that have the same standard out, standardized layout. So it may not be the same, but I got to thinking that that looked very similar. So I wanted to look that up, but a bit, a couple of bits of, um, cross, stuff going on there to have more people find it or try to find out more about where Tantus is. But we do get the reintroduction of um, Admiral Rampart, so it was good to see him again. So can't wait to see how he plays into all of this. Um, and then in a very interesting bit of television for this week, um, I also had a chance to watch X-Men 97 episode 5, Remember It. and. Overall, going into it, because I did start watching the episode later in the day, so I started seeing these uh, posts and stuff about how a lot of people were thinking that it's a really good episode. Um, it was very sad, it was uh, very moving and all of that. I'm like, how can an episode of anything be that good? So watching it, I you know, the first two thirds or so, maybe about the first half of it was okay, build up into a lot of stuff. But we get a random sentinel attack and I'm like, well, it's the sentinels again. So, you know, what's new about that? But you get a very um, intense battle between, you know, Magneto, Rogue and Gambit and then the, trying to save the Warlocks and a uh, big battle going on, you know, the full power of Magneto and all, basically all of the mutants that were fighting to take on the... Um, Sentinels, which I guess they ultimately win because of, you know, all of their sacrifices, but overall it was a very strong scene. You have Magneto saving himself for other people and getting that understanding of um, that's how, or he, I guess he finally understood why Professor X did things the way he did or getting that understanding of why Professor X was the way he was with a lot of stuff. So definitely a very good episode. It stands up there as a very moving episode in everything that happened with it. So definitely worth a watch and I can't wait to see how they um, introduce or work that into the rest of the season and the impacts, implications and all of that stuff. Um, so next up, as far as the trilogy of films that I've really that I've been wanting to watch for a couple of weeks now is the original RoboCop trilogy. 
um, I think it was either on YouTube where I got a recommended um, cover video or like something about like um, I'd buy that for a dollar came up and then I just got into want the mood of wanting to watch the films. And I thought, well, let's see how they hold up after all these years. So I do own them um, as a digital purchase. So just watch them one after another back to back. And overall, I want to say the film does something that's very strange. It's in this we very weird groove that on one hand, it's a very late 80s, early 90s film set of films where, you know, the cars are very much of the time. The hairstyles are of the time. The look and feel and everything is all very much of its time. But it doesn't really stand as one of those things that where they make a big deal of things to make it stand out. Like it's of the era, but they don't do like the only the main thing. They, the main focus of all the films is RoboCop and everything related to RoboCop, and that OCP is the company that's doing all this advanced futuristic stuff. But they're not, nothing else. And like even with like the stuff for Delta City and rebuilding Detroit and all of that stuff. Um, they don't get that far to the point where they do any of that stuff. So the focus stays on, you know, Robocop, Ed 209, the um, cane suit and all of that stuff. So when you're watching the film, even though it's of the era, you realize that the stuff that OCP is doing is the main, most futuristic stuff going on. So it actually generally just works and they build into the Robocop suit. The technology and stuff, while you would think that, you know, it's very 80s and 90s of what they were trying to do, but because, you know, the way that Robocop suit is as well, it makes sense of what they were trying to do. It's a prototype and it's going to be what it is. And then it's the whole stuff with um, like the Ed 209 programming, the cane suit and all of that, like even though the programming could be stable, it also requires a physical mental component to make it balance and make it work. Like they have to have the drive to be stable or drive to do that and want that. So all of that overall generally just worked for me. Like even in the third film with the um, Japanese uh, samurai robots, like even all of that generally worked. Like they're more futuristic robots, but they don't have the voice module so you see that um um like the voice like i guess they didn't need the voice so it kind of works out that they don't talk but um and then you can see like it kind of looks awkward as well as far as the code and the general look and feel of it but then like when robocop punches one of the robots in the um face at the end of it you see like the jaw moved and all that so you can see how like fragile but important and like tightly set up that all of that stuff is so overall they did a good job like the main like i guess the most futuristic part in all of this like assuming all of the rest of it is normal was the jetpack that robocop used but even in that it worked um which watching it this time it felt very video game-esque where like you can see when he's doing the barrel roll or like moving left and right it looked very much like you have someone, you know, on a pole, like using a pole to move him left and right, spinning him over, much like you would have do with a um, control system of the time or even now. So I thought that was pretty cool and the special effects to do that were pretty good. To the point where every so often you do have certain shots that look very, like the perspective was kind of weird because like the Robocop would be over, not the quite same brightness as everything else, but the other stuff would be. So I don't know if it's maybe the modernization where they, try to normalize that a little bit but overall all of that stuff generally um just worked for me so even for now like watching it i enjoyed it it all fit together very well the only thing that probably didn't work too much but te actually technically for me does is the commercial so the guy saying i'd buy that for a dollar the um 9000 sux and all of that stuff like everything was very much of what the era was of like what they thought that would uh, lead into the future and to a certain extent it actually kind of did so overall like that stuff is very much of its time but kind of actually works it kind of works as a good stamp in time of um i forgot where i heard it was like it, like what they thought the future would be in the present but now in the past it looks kind of ridiculous so um, I re definitely recommend giving them the movies a watch. They're still good fun. The brutality and gore of 
the first two films, the third one was not as much, but the first two films, the brutality and the gore was definitely over, was very much over the top. So, you know, Murphy getting his hand shot off, then getting shot at point blank range, the Ed 209 shooting the board member out the window and all of that. Um, the bad guys, you know, ripping apart Robocop in the second movie and all of that. Um, it's still pretty hard to watch right now, but in the scheme of the films kind of works. So even though the the main uh, desynchronized part of that is that the ridiculousness and silliness of the film is offset with the brutality. So it's one of those things that's weird to watch and kind of hard, but then they offset it in the opposite direction just as much. So um, definitely wor recommend watching those films. So with that being said, um, as far as this week's Android quick tip review kind of thing, it's not necessarily um, any particular thing that I wanted to talk about, but I did mention something before as far as when you're customizing your phone and using a custom launcher or you want to customize um, your home screen a little bit, I recommend the, or the easiest way to customize your Android home screen if, you're, if your um, home screen launcher supports it is installing and using an icon pack. So all you have to do is go into the Google Play Store and search for icon pack and what that will let you do is um, customize your icons with a particular look and theme of um, what, you're, what you want your icons to look at. So you can have, you know, a flat style, you can have a kind of um, highlighted modern look, um, but kind of like a neon look if you want, uh, um, an outline icon pack, you can do that. There's a particular set, but I think it's called Line X, where they have different designs too. So if you want blue outlines, red, orange, green, they have a whole color pack. If you want a neon version, they have that. So there's all sorts of icon packs. Some are free, some are paid that lets you customize it to how you want your home screen to look. One of the main things that I do recommend looking for, which is less of a problem now than it was before, but I always recommend looking for icon packs that are generally updated very regularly with new icons, just because as um, you know, new apps and services come out and older apps um, fall by the wayside, the older packs, icon packs may not have some of the newer apps that you may have installed on your device. So, you know, service like apps like, you know, Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and all of those will have icon packs because they're that, you know, ubiquitous and have generally been updated. They're, they've been around for a long time. Same thing with like, you know, Gmail and Pocket Cast and your uh, more, well, you know, Power Amp or Music Olay and stuff like that. But older apps and games and services and things like that that no longer are around will be in older icon packs but not in newer ones or and things like that and even vice versa like older icon packs may not have you know PUBG or teens or th and things like that but they'll still have skype because at the time skype was still a thing so it's one of those things where i always recommend looking out for newer icon packs um just to make sure that you can include as many newer apps as possible but also the downside on that is if you are using an older um, app or service that you still need a, want an icon for then it may not be there if you're using a newer icon pack and they got rid of it. Um, generally speaking most icon packs don't get rid of older icons they keep adding to their database of icon packs so you're, you may be generally okay but the beauty of using custom launchers like Nova Launcher is that if an icon is not picked or not found, you can still manually pick another icon if you wish. So let's say for, like I'll use Twitter as an example. So um, if the icon pack has um, updated their um, icon pack to use the X logo, but you still prefer the Twitter icon, many icon packs, or at least the ones that I've used, still have, they'll use both, so they'll have the X logo in it, but they'll also still have the Twitter logo, um, the icon based around the, old, the original Twitter bird, so you can still change it to that if you want, so if you have an old service that you want to change the icon for to match your current setup, then you can just search for an icon that looks close enough to what you want or kind of matches to what you want it to look like, so the best example I give now is that most icon packs that I've used don't have blue skies icons set up in it. So 
what you can do is search for things like blue or sky and use another icon that better matches it. So like if you search for sky, there are a couple of um, icons out there that either use clouds or there's a dark sky icon. So you can use other icons in place of the official one so you have that um, unique and uniform look and feel. So. Um, that's all I kind of wanted to recommend for this time. So the, using icon packs is the easiest way to customize your home screen. So definitely give that a shot. So to round out this week's episode, um, I wanted to give an update for Ebb Eternity. So this week I had a chance to complete episode or chapters three and four of the game. So the main reasoning behind that was just that um, last weekend I had a chance to finish up Crystalline pretty quickly and um just because of extra timing on the weekend and all that and then for ch um chapter four one of those things it was one of those things where the week was busy so what i did was turn on god mode so i could spend more time navigating the maps and not worrying about having to defeat enemies dying a bunch of times and all of that stuff because and it was actually a good thing for that because as it turns out um i was just looking for some trivia on the game and random information of where it's going if there was more information on what those transitional meant the interstitial text means and all that and i got to the um, page for the, um map four and one of the things that stood out to me was that the part or is that the part time for the map is 39 minutes which i wasn't really paying attention to most to them in general but as i've been playing all the doom games and various mods and stuff that stood out because i don't remember ever seeing a part time of that much and as i finished reading the page it turns out that the average play time for the map is 90 minutes about an hour and a half which i was like wow how big is this map that it takes that long to finish at par and then even looking around online at you know other you know better doom game player video game players than me even for them like a the couple of them that stood up at the top came out to like an hour just past an hour and i'm like wow well, how big is this map or how, how hard is this map that it takes that long to finish even for people who are good at it so or at least better at it than me but definitely i'll say good at good at the game so in playing it i'm glad that god mode was on for me in this case because it took me about 100 minutes hour 40 minutes and overall it was actually a super fun level it was very intricate detail oriented going around this big you know base or facility or whatever it was it was very reminiscent of the ending for crystalline where you have this big castle you're going around and ultimately going out to the ruins where there's stonehenge for some reason but this map was one of those things where it was very huge it was very interesting fun to play and very much a you know this big tech-ish base that um the developers spent a lot of time creating it now i'm not sure if this is something that could have been done in the original doom games i could have sworn there maybe were a map or two that are like that where they're bigger than the rest so they threw that in because they had space and they could do it but Maps this big um, kind of stood out that it was so big and so detail oriented that I was very impressed that they pulled it off. You know, you have to go on different, like almost every area had multiple levels to it. You have to go up and down, you have teleporters, you have all the enemies, you have to open up gates and you have to go to different things. You have to toggle switches. Um, you have an ending arena fight in that 90 minute level and all of that. So. Uh, when you're watching that gameplay, like, yes, God Mode is on for me because I know for me, having it off would have probably doubled or tripled the amount of time it would have taken for me to finish it. But uh, I'm also glad I did, I did have it on because it, it allowed me to appreciate um, just how good and, and like big and vast that the level was and how much time they were able to spend on it. So, and then you come to realize it's almost like a Game of Thrones style setup where you have this big intricate map, but it's not the map finale. You still have one more level after that, which kind of serves as a good way to wind down after that level. So that last level um, was good as well. Like you could see how it was very intricate. You're looping back on yourself to navigate to a lot of the different levels. You have catacombs and a... Uh, higher up things so it's kind of like a castle on the hill kind of map so but definitely also very much appreciated to have things like that um to set up but um that's why for me 
and I'm um, having God mode on lets me appreciate all those things. I know for me as an amateur video game player, um, it would have taken me two or three times as long to get through all of that stuff. Um, so with that, as of this recording, um, now that the cha now that chapter four is in, I'll be moving on to chapter five and six. I was actually kind of contemplating if I should turn God mode off or not. Um, I did jump into the beginning of um, chapter five, map one, and it started off or started right off with the Hell Knight, I think. So, or a Baron FL, I'm not quite sure. But uh, with that being said, I was thinking that just to avoid the timing situation that I have at the moment, I was thinking of keeping God mode on and spending more time appreciating the maps just because um, the first couple of um, ch uh, chapters in the mod were good and they were actually much easier so it's easier to get through and appreciate everything um, but at least with crystalline and the snow levels um, that's one of those things I noticed that was by I didn't have god mode on but the episode the maps were vast and worth it but when you have to spend more time worrying about the bad guys you have less time to spend on appreciating the maps so for me, I think that's what I'm going to do is for the rest of, of Eternity, I'm going to keep God Bone on just so I can defeat the enemies, but also spend a little bit more time to appreciate all of the uh, design work that went into all of these maps. So if anything changes or I do anything different, you'll see all those notes in the descriptions for all of the videos. But I kind of wanted to put it out there that that's kind of what I'm planning to do for the rest of the game or the rest of the mod, just because I am enjoying the game and the design of it. But um, just for me personally, it's hard to focus on the design when I have to worry about all these different um, enemies. And um, for me, then that's just more of a me thing that it's not anything bad. I do see the videos on YouTube of other players being able to make it through it. But for me, they're a lot better at the games than I am. So um, I'm going to kind of take this approach, but I wanted to also be upfront about it. So that's all there is for this particular episode. So if you have any questions, comment, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on this post on the various social media sites I'm on. All of them are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, the YouTube channel has all the gameplay videos and all that stuff at uh, youtube.com slash pateln01. I know I've kind of slowed down on the YouTube shorts as of late. It goes back to the, all that timing stuff. So. Uh, once it settles down a little bit, I'll probably just start putting out a little bit more of that or maybe using them a little bit for maybe some of the gameplay videos that I do um, to to start putting up shorts of that of like the highlights of the games of things that I want to appreciate or something. Um, and of course, the Patreon is patreon.com slash PatelN01 for um, early access to the show, add free versions of it. Um, a link to the video version so if you want all of that good stuff then you can support the show on the patreon there and of course as i mentioned the website is headphonesneal.reviews for um, all the links to everything past episodes and all of that good stuff but thanks for tuning into this particular episode thanks for tuning in and until next time and of course thanks for being a supporter and subscriber and all of that good stuff but thanks for tuning in and until next time